Good morning, dear friends, and greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whose love and mercies and faithfulness has brought us to this new day. And he who has given us this day also has already released to us everything that we need to live godly and holy lives. And so let us be careful about appropriating this grace and the power of the Holy Spirit and his guidance through the word to live such a life and glorify our God. Today's meditation is taken from 1st, 2nd King, uh, chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. And this is a story of a prophet Elisha and his school of prophets. Let me read this passage for you that you may remember exactly what it says. The company of the prophet said to Elisha, Look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan where each of us can get a pole and let us build a place there for us to live. And he said, go. Then one of them said, won't you please come with your servants? I will, Elisha replied. And he went with them. And they went to the Jordan and they began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh, my Lord, he cried out. It was borrowed. And the man of God say, asked, where did it fall? And when he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it there and made the, fr uh, 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 the iron float, lift it out. He said, then the man reached out. I'm sorry, verse 7 says, uh, after uh, he brought the iron floating, lift it out, he said. Then the man reached out his hand and took it. This is an amazing miracle performed by Prophet Elisha by the power and authority of God his Lord. Now the school of prophets uh, flourished under the leadership of Prophet Elisha. You know, the success and uh, growth of any Christian institutions or uh, any Christian uh, ministry depends on the man who leads it. And if it's a man who knows how to walk with God and hear from God and follow God's ways, he will f find his ministry and uh, his uh, uh, is, whether it is an institution or, or a Bible college or seminar or church or any other ministry flourishing. And this should be uh, our method. And the Bible school facilities uh, became very small. And so the student body met and discussed the matter serious, uh, and the seriousness of the problem. And they decided to solve the problem by themselves rather than uh, burdening the college authorities. What a spirit and what an understanding and what a consideration and honor for the leaders. And this would also help save money, they said, and as well for the college. See, they were thinking of the common good of the institution rather than being selfish and seek for self-comfort. Now, they sought permission from the principal, which was granted. As Prophet Elisha tell them, uh, go ahead and do whatever they are planning. And thus, the plan of the student body to build an extension wing was finalized. And they all marched down to the river Jordan. And on reaching the Jordan bank, they commenced the work with all earnestness. And while cutting trees, 
one of them lost the axe head and perhaps he was uh, cutting with greater force and enthusiasm than the rest. And you know, sometimes over enthusiasm can at times uh, cause problems which could be avoided. And let us learn a few lessons from this event in Elisha's ministry of uh, training the future prophets. Number one, first, a lesson on spiritual effectiveness. And there are two or three things I would like to mention concerning this point. You know, there is a danger of losing spiritual uh, effectiveness if we are not watchful and praying. And Jesus knew it all along. And he said to his disciples, this danger is very real. So he urged them to be watchful and praying. And one will never know when suddenly a lion is in front of us. If we are not watchful, and that's what can happen. A problem like a lion right in front of us. Be watchful so that we will um, not only see the danger approaching, Along with that watchfulness, we also need to be praying. For what? Be watchful so that you will see the danger approaching and be praying in order that we may be equipped with uh, uh, strength and wisdom to deal or to face the danger and destroy the enemy's uh, plan. And that is why Jesus was very much concerned. And so he urged his disciples always, be praying and always pray and pray without ceasing and be watchful and pray. Well, in a simple words, we used to say, watch and pray. Why should we watch? Because unless we are watchful, we will never know that the danger is nearing. And why should we pray? Because if we don't pray, we will not be equipped with the power and strength and wisdom to deal and to able, enable us to face that situation and destroy the enemy's plan. And uh, if we don't pray, we will not have uh, that strength needed and wisdom needed to face the situations like that. And so we both have to be very watchful and very, very prayerful. And without these two, my friends, in the ministry, you cannot succeed or go very far. And many people fail because as we get to be seen in our ministry, we slowly begin to lose touch with heaven and uh, time for prayer because we get so exhausted and tired and we don't have a time to spend uh, with the word and listen from God. That is the danger. And so we need to learn to destroy the plan of the enemy through watchfulness and prayerfulness. And the second lesson we can learn is the man did not lose the whole instrument, but he lost the effective part of it. And now that is as good as losing the whole thing, though he was holding the half of it, which is useless unless you have what you lost. Now, without the sharp axe head, he was helpless and useless. <laughs> Remember that. Now, he still had the knowledge, what is needed, how to use it, and where to use it, and when to use it. We may possess all this knowledge, but if we don't have what is effective, we are useless and we are helpless. And um, thirdly, when did he lose the axe head? At the time of growth and expansion. 
in the midst of service. That's when he lost. And always remember the devil knows when to attack. When we may be at the peak of our, 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 our ministry, all around success and effectiveness. And that is the moment when we can lose something most important in our life if we are not watchful and prayerful. And uh, the fourth lesson is, how did he recover it? How did he recover the axe head? Because it has fallen into the waters of the river and uh, the river is, is, not, is deep and so it is not easy to recover it. Now, three things to notice there. Without any explanation, let me mention these three things. Number one, you know, in the process of recovering, the first thing he did was he stopped working. You know, my friends, it is no use. I keep on uh, cutting the tree without the axe head. And there are, in the ministry, there are many ministers, many preachers doing exactly the same thing. Though you have lost the anointing, you have lost touch with heaven, you can still preach and we can, you can still shout and you can still jump up and down and make people uh, excited and create a hype. You can do all that. But always remember, when you realize that you have lost that touch of God upon your life, stop working. And number two, be confessing his laws. You know, he confessed his laws. He said, alas, oh my God, I lost the hack's head and it was borrowed, he said. That confession is very, very important, my friends. So unless you confess, what your con real condition is, you, you cannot expect God to rekindle you again or revive you again. And third thing is by returning to the place where he lost the axe head. Now this is exactly what Jesus told in one of the, um, the churches in the book of Revelation. Chapter 2 verse 5. God is writing this letter to the church at Ephesus. And he said, I advise you, return to where you have fallen from. And repent. And my friends, the restoration is for you to go back to where you have fallen and then retrace your step forward through repentance and confession and getting right with God and making restitution. My friends, this, these are the things that you need to keep in mind what to do when you have lost the axe head. And the second point I would like to bring to your attention is this. There is a second lesson that we can learn from this, and which is this. The importance of union as in John chapter 15. You think of iron. Iron belongs to mineral. And how about wood? The, the handle of the axe head is wood. And wood belongs to vegetable. Now here is minerals and vegetable. What is my point? Importance of union. One is strong. Iron is strong. The other weak. Other, the other uh, part of the instrument uh, which belongs to vegetable world, it can be broken anytime. And my friends, when these two things, one is strong and one is weak, the iron head and the handle, they become powerful to pull down trees when united together. 
these two things can become effective and powerful to pull down any strong, tall trees. That is the lesson. Now, this is the lesson Jesus taught in the Gospel according to St. John chapter 15. Where he talks about, the first paragraph talks about uh, the, our relationship with the Lord. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Now the vine tree is strong, the branches are weak. But these weak branches are joined to the vine. The branch become very powerful to bring forth enough fruit for your enjoyment. And that is the lesson that we can learn from this. The weak and the strong. And Jesus said, you are the branches and unless you abide in me, you cannot bring forth fruit. What is the purpose of the branch? The purpose of the branch is not show yourself how beautiful leaves and how beautiful you are, standing straight. And all. That is not the purpose. The purpose of the branch is to bring forth fruit. And the fruitless branches, Jesus went on to say, is not good enough, so the gardener will cut it off, separate it. Because there is no fruit. And my friends, you are the branch, you are the weak one. And how about Jesus? He is the strong one. He is the strongest. And when the weak branches are joined to the strong Lord Jesus Christ, we, when we are joined to Jesus Christ and united to Jesus Christ, we can become the most powerful instrument in God's hand to destroy the powers of darkness and pull down the strongholds of the devil. Hallelujah. And that is the lesson. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will stir up your heart and enlighten your mind further so that you will understand the effectiveness and uh, importance of a union with Jesus Christ as, in order to be effective and powerful disciples to bring down the strongholds of Satan. This is God's plan and purpose for your life. No matter how weak you are, you abide in Christ. You join to Christ and remain there. By your mistake, by your weakness, you should not be separated. Let the power of this union be manifested in your life by bearing fruit for the glory and honor of God and for the kingdom of God. This is God's plan. May the Lord bless you as you open yourself to Jesus and be united with him forever, constantly. Hallelujah. So that you may shine for him and bring forth glory for his holy name. Amen. My friends, this is a wonderful day. This is a great day. Enjoy this day by the grace of God. Amen.